Why lower levels of low-density lipoprotein cholesterol LDLC, is linked to higher risk of dementia. In the world, it's estimated that 75 million will be living with the condition by 2030, every 3 seconds, someone develops 65 seconds. Meanwhile, the use of statin, Lipita, Crestor, Zoker, Mevacor, Provacol, cholesterol-lowering drugs doubled among U.S. adults from 2000 to 2011, and U.S. doctors write more than 200 million prescriptions for such drugs every year. In the fervor to lower cholesterol levels, a misguided strategy still being mistakenly promoted to reduce heart disease risk, might healthcare professionals be increasing dementia risk? So suggest the results of a new study published in the journal Frontiers in Neurology, which looked into the relationship between cholesterol and cognitive function. While cholesterol is still largely vilified, and statin use still heavily promoted, the study found that having lower levels of low-density lipoprotein LDL cholesterol is linked to a higher risk of dementia. High LDL cholesterol a protective factor against cognitive decline. The study involved inversely associated with dementia in the study participants, even after controlling for other factors that might increase risk, including demographic characteristics, health behavior, mood assessment and medical history. What's more, the researchers noted, there was a significantly higher proportion of participants with low levels of total cholesterol TC, and LDL cholesterol in the dementia group than in groups without dementia. The association was so strong that they concluded a high level of LDL cholesterol may be considered as a potential protective factor against cognition decline. This may come as a surprise for those who have been told that cholesterol is more of a liability than an asset, but other studies have also found cholesterol to be protected. A study of more than 4,300 Medicare recipients aged 65 and over also revealed that higher levels of total cholesterol were associated with a decreased risk of Alzheimer's disease, even after testing for cardiovascular risk cholesterol levels were also associated with worse cognitive function among South Korean study participants aged 65 and over, and were considered to be a state marker for AD Alzheimer's disease. Why higher cholesterol levels may be good for your brain? Your brain contains up to 30% cholesterol, which is an essential component of neurons and, as stated by the researchers of the featured study, of great importance to develop and maintain neuronal plasticity. Beyond this, it's been suggested that high cholesterol could be an indicator of overall good nutritional status and health, whereas low cholesterol has been linked to a higher risk of mortality and is often seen alongside malnutrition and chronic diseases, including cancer. In one study, women with high cholesterol actually had a 28% lower mortality risk than women with low cholesterol. The Frontiers in Neurology study authors also suggested that, as a major component of the brain, decreasing cholesterol levels could be associated with cerebral atrophy, a typical anatomic syndrome of dementia, and other factors more directly related to your brain health. Should you think twice before taking statins? If you've been told you need a statin drug to lower your cholesterol levels, you may want to think carefully before filling the prescription for a few key reasons. Side effects are one of them. Aside from an increased risk of dementia, statins deplete your body of coenzyme Q10, CoQ10, which accounts for many of their devastating results. CoQ10 is used for energy production by every cell in your body. Its reduced form, ubiquinol, is a critical component of cellular respiration and production of adenosine triphosphate ATP. ATP is a coenzyme used as an energy carrier in every cell of your body. The depletion of CoQ10 caused by statins can actually increase your risk of acute heart failure. Statins also inhibit the synthesis of vitamin K2, which can make your heart health worse instead of better, and reduce ketone production. Ketones are crucial nutrients to feed your mitochondria and are important regulators of metabolic health and longevity. The other major issue is that the payoff for taking on this heightened risk of side effects is very small, as there is far more that goes into your risk of heart disease than your cholesterol levels. If you look at absolute risk, statin drugs benefit just 1% of the population. This means that out of 100 people treated with the drugs, one person will have one less heart attack. Keep in mind also that statins reduce your total cholesterol number, without addressing your HDL, LDL, very low-density lipoproteins VLDL, or triglyceride levels. A recent review of three large industry-funded studies even found LDL cholesterol does not cause cardiovascular disease, raising serious concerns about the continued push for statin drugs to lower cholesterol. Here are the conclusion of this review. 
Elderly people with high LDLC live the longest. If high LDLC was the major cause of atherosclerosis and CVD cardiovascular diseases, people with the highest LDLC should have shorter lives than people with low values. However, in a recent systematic review of 19 cohort studies including more than 68,000 elderly people greater than 60 years of age, we found the opposite. In the largest cohort study those with the highest LDLC levels lived even longer than those on statin treatment. In addition, numerous Japanese studies have found that high LDLC is not a risk factor for CVD mortality in women of any age. Satins linked to neuromuscular disease. While the featured study didn't look specifically at statin use, it stands to reason that using such drugs to lower your cholesterol to artificially low levels could backfire in the form of degenerating your brain health. Previously, statins have been linked to the neuromuscular degenerative disease, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis (ALS), also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. The World Health Organization (WHO) Foundation Collaborating Center for International Drug Monitoring receives safety reports associated with statin medications and has noted a disproportionately high number of patients with upper motor neuron lesions among those taking statin medications. The lead researcher, Ivor Ralph Edwards, is an expert in toxicology, acute and chronic poisoning and adverse drug reactions. He stated, we do advocate that trial discontinuation of a statin should be considered in patients with serious neuromuscular disease such as the ALS-like syndrome, given the poor prognosis and a possibility that progression of the disease may be halted or even reversed. A cyclical ketogenic diet may be the solution. If you're looking to protect both your brain and heart health, avoiding statin drugs and following a ketogenic diet may be the answer. A high-fat, moderate protein and low-net carb ketogenic diet is crucial for protecting your brain health and is recommended for virtually everyone. This type of diet involves restricting all but non-starchy vegetable carbs and replacing them with low to moderate amounts of high-quality protein and high amounts of beneficial fat. It's a diet that will help optimize your weight and reduce your risk of chronic degenerative disease while protecting your brain. Eating this way will help you convert from carb burning mode to fat burning mode, which in turn triggers your body to produce ketones also known as ketone bodies or ketoacids. Ketones can feed your brain and prevent brain atrophy. They may even restore and renew neuron and nerve function in your brain after damage has set in. A ketogenic diet will also reduce inflammation while lowering your insulin levels, both key for protecting your heart health and reducing your risk of dementia. However, the metabolic magic actually occurs during the refeeding phase, not during the starvation phase. If you're constantly in ketosis, you're missing out on one of the most valuable benefits of the ketogenic diet, which is why, once you have established ketosis, then cycle healthy carbs back in as recommended. What are the early signs of dementia? Whether you're taking a statin drug or not, being on the lookout for early signals of dementia is important. Dementia is not a disease in itself but, rather, is a term used to describe a number of different brain illnesses that may affect your memory, thinking, behavior and ability to perform everyday activities. Many people associate dementia with memory loss and this is a red flag however, not all memory problems are due to Alzheimer's. People with dementia may display changes in mood and behavior. A person may, for instance, stop doing something they've always loved to do, be it cooking a certain dish for your birthday or watching the evening news. Apathy is another common sign, although some people may display more blatant changes like suddenly becoming sexually promiscuous or developing the habit of snatching food off other people's plates. Mild cognitive impairment MCI, may follow the earliest changes in mood and behavior. MCI is a slight decline in cognitive abilities that increases your risk of developing more serious dementia, including Alzheimer's disease. Forgetting important information that you would have normally recalled, such as appointments, conversations or recent events, may be a sign, and you may have a harder time making sound decisions, figuring out the sequence of steps needed to complete a task, or judging the time needed to do so. The Alzheimer's Association also compiled differences between symptoms of dementia and typical age-related changes. Signs of Alzheimer's, dementia, poor judgment and decepts define them. Typical age-related changes, making a bad decision once in a while. Missing a monthly payment. Forgetting which day it is and remembering it later. Sometimes forgetting which word to use. Losing things from time to time. 
Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel Healthy Lifestyle.